What's up everyone, welcome back to yet some more Reddit stories about entitled people, crazy people, and all that kind of stuff. Hope you're all doing awesome today. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and let's get into today's stories. Reporting my professor for refusing to accommodate my disability. I, 21 female, am a Canadian university student, majoring in psychology with an 87% average. I have a documented disability that frequently requires hospitalization, which is why I need certain accommodations, like being allowed to submit assignments online and recording lectures if I'm too ill to attend. With these in place, I've been able to keep up my grades. This semester, I'm taking an elective course, as you have to take several to graduate, taught by Dr. X, 70s male. At the beginning of the semester, I submitted all the paperwork for my accommodations, as I do for every class. These accommodations aren't anything excessive, just being allowed to submit work online without penalty, and being sent a recording of lectures in case I'm hospitalized or unable to attend in person. Other professors this semester have gone above and beyond, and I couldn't be more happy with them. Dr. X, however, was immediately dismissive and told me he didn't believe in special treatment, and that I should learn to prioritize attending class like everyone else. I tried explaining that my condition makes it impossible for me to always attend in person, and that these accommodations are necessary for me to succeed. He said I was using my disability as a crutch, and that life doesn't hand out exceptions. I emailed him afterward to clarify and ask again that he respect the accommodations. He responded that I should be grateful he hadn't already penalized me for missing one of his lectures, and that in the real world there are no special privileges. This honestly broke me because I've worked so hard to keep my grades up despite my condition. Things escalated during a major assignment. I had submitted it online as per my accommodation because I was hospitalized at the time. Dr. X deducted 20% for my grade, moving an 80 I'd earned to a 60, saying it was late because I didn't submit it in person. I tried to talk to him about it but he refused to budge and said I should have found a way to submit it in person. I reminded him that my accommodations allow for online submissions, and he just brushed it off saying I should have figured out another way. At that point, I reported him to the university's disability office. They were really supportive and told me he was absolutely in the wrong. A few days later, yesterday, Dr. X pulled me aside after lecture which I attended in person, and said I had made him look bad by going to the administration. He called me entitled and said I should suck it up and deal with life's unfairness. Now some classmates have heard about it, and a few said I overreacted by reporting him, and should have just accepted the situation since it's only one class and one professor. They keep saying I just need a 50 to pass the class. But I don't think I should have to accept discrimination just because this class is an elective and because I'm still passing. My accommodations are legally required, and I've worked really hard to maintain my grades in spite of my health issues. It's funny how this professor goes on about how people don't deserve exceptions or special treatment, yet he thinks he's the only one that doesn't have to follow the university's rules and regulations. Sorry professor, but by docking points because someone can't turn in an assignment in person because they're in the hospital, you're not giving some profound life lesson about how the world is unfair. You're just being an asshole. So keep your own personal problems and biases at home and just do your job. You did the right thing by reporting it, OP. You shouldn't have to just accept a worse grade just because this bitter man has a chip on his shoulder. Entitled customer steals from me and the store I work for. Before I start, I work at a place that sells, uses, and repairs power tools. An old man around 85 wearing a black hoodie and khakis comes in the previous day because their combo toolkit was not charging their batteries. So I returned the item and suggested that if the new one didn't work that I could fix it for him. He thanked me before dropping a weapon of sorts on the ground, but it didn't go off. Scrambling, he grabbed it and shoved it back into his pants and tightened his belt. Fast forward a day. We'd written off the kit and I set to work fixing it before my shift. I had to clock on early and left the kit unattended in a break room. I didn't know it at the time, but this gentleman around 85 walked into the open receiver bay door, grabbed the unstable product and returned to the front in order to return the new kit while also keeping it. He was screaming at me, demanding his refund while I tried to explain what the issue could be. I eventually summoned the manager and told him what was happening. We both caught on to his lie as it's becoming a regular occurrence. 
my manager approved the return, at the price of banning this person from being sold power tools again. Not a full-on ban, but he can no longer return tools to us. We did not tell the man this. He was smirking, walking out of the store. He went to his truck and pulled his brand new kit out just to make sure he still had it, right on our camera. Today though, I got a text from my coworker. His tool doesn't work, and he has a service and return ban on his account. Eventually he was told to leave, by himself or in cuffs. He chose to leave by himself, cursing our register clerk all the way. And my boss is now forwarding the security and audio tapes to the police and the store's lawyers. In fact, in this state, theft can actually be a felony, depending on the circumstances. Neighbors wanted to put a flag on my flagpole. My husband and I own a rural, undeveloped property. As such, there's a group of about 10 to 12 people who share a water source together. This little water group meets once a year, and it's a nice time to talk to the neighbors, especially because we actually are pretty physically separated from the nearest house. For some reason, our piece of land has a giant flagpole on it. It doesn't even have a driveway, but it has a big-ass flagpole. During our recent yearly water board meeting, the president, an old man, gave an update about the flagpole project. Turns out he, by himself, had been planning to go onto our land and erect two additional flagpoles, and was going to fly several flags to represent branches of the U.S. Armed Forces. That's so nice, for our service members, all the other neighbors agreed. I looked at my husband and I could just see the smoke rising from his ears. Two things my husband hates, other people, and the idea of other people breaking the sacred solitude that is our undeveloped parcel of land. We didn't say anything at the meeting, but immediately upon returning home, my husband emailed everyone in the waterboard that absolutely not would they be putting up more flagpoles on our land. He didn't mention how irritated he was that they would presume to erect a permanent installation on not their land. He instead said it was a major insurance liability. The president basically huffed and said, Well, it's for the troops. I think my husband replied, No thanks. Now what I don't get is why did he insist on putting it on OP's property right off the bat? If he wants one so bad, why doesn't he just put one on his own property? And even going as far as giving this project a name before even telling the landowner what he's planning on doing. And also he says that it's for the troops, but if you're putting it up in the middle of nowhere where the only people that are going to see it are the 10 people that live in the area, is it actually for the troops or is it for yourself? Landlord put me through three years of hell. My landlord was a terrible human being. Honestly, calling him a human is even pushing it. Just a few things he has done to me over the past three years. Stole my dryer and other household products that are in a common area. Made me pay for a plumbing repair which was deemed normal wear and tear. Tried breaking into my house. Retaliated against me because I went to my lawyer after he sent me a letter about a parking spot. He tried charging me an extra $150 a month. Mind you, I was never late for rent in three years, except for when he made me pay for the plumbing repair. So the next month I was a couple days late. The list goes on. Now this apartment was nowhere near nice. I found out the plumbing was illegal. He left me with a porch for years that had severe safety issues. The ceiling paint was always falling down. Gas heater was not up to code and so on. I finally got my chance to leave after he wanted to raise my rent $500 a month. He will do anything and everything to get more money out of his tenants. So I called the building inspector four days before I left. I told him everything. The porch when he finally replaced it didn't have a permit and was definitely not up to code. I told him about the plumbing and the heater. I went on and on. The inspector came over the very next day. I saw him taking measurements. Each violation is a $500 a day fine until fixed. I honestly don't know what happened, but my god did it feel good to finally get him back. He's at the very least on the town's radar. A week before I moved out, he tried telling me I needed to be out at a specific time. I never responded, and where I lived, that's not how it works. He tried to threaten me with the police if I wasn't gone. Well, I went to the police myself that morning to warn them. The landlord did come by, threatened and harassed me. I called the police. They informed him I was in the right. Long story short, he had broken into my apartment. I had left to go to storage while I was gone. He nailed my door shut. I told the police to get the supervisor because I was over being harassed by this guy. 
Go figure, he left before the supervisor could get there. I'm positive he knew he'd be arrested on site. Got the police report. They're charging him with the felony for breaking and entering. Fines plus the charge? Don't be a jerk to good people. My daughter wants me to sit next to a picture of my late husband at her wedding. My late husband and I didn't have a good relationship. He struggled with alcoholism and ultimately drank himself to death after I divorced him. After some time, I remarried, but my daughter doesn't get along with my new husband. They have a strained relationship, and I married him while she was in college. She has hated that I have remarried and is kinda a dick to my husband. My daughter is getting married soon, and while I'm excited for her, I've had some concerns about how she's planning the wedding. She mentioned wanting to include a picture of my late husband at the ceremony, which I completely understand as a way to honor him. However, she also wants me to sit next to his picture during the ceremony, and my husband would sit elsewhere. I told her that I'm not comfortable with that arrangement. I also learned she wanted me to sit with the picture at the family table, and my husband wouldn't be sitting there either. I told her no. She got upset and said I was being selfish and disrespectful to her and her father's memory. I told her that if that's her plan, I won't be able to attend the wedding. She called me a jerk and now family is involved. So if she wants to honor her father's memory at her own wedding, that's all fine and dandy. But to also make OP sit next to the picture and not even allow her new husband to be around her is honestly just very silly. I mean, the daughter says that by the mother not wanting to do this, she's disrespecting her father's memory. But I would argue that the daughter is the one disrespecting her mother's new life and husband by essentially allowing him to be present at the wedding but only under the condition that they pretend he doesn't exist. And I mean, come on, does she really want her own mother to sit by herself at her wedding, next to a picture of her late ex-husband? Late husband technically wouldn't even be the right term, I guess, since they were divorced. And honestly, expecting her to do this is just kind of sad and weird. But what do you guys think? Do you think it's a fair request, or is it a bit too much? Anyway, that's going to be all for today. Thank you for watching, I appreciate it. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you want more Reddit stories like these. So take care and I'll see you next time.